Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Mel Herbert here for Talking Tesla. I want to talk about Powerwall. I want to talk about Powerwall in terms of why you might think about getting one and give myself as a very specific example and also take you through the process. So this will be part one of a couple of videos because I've just started the process of actually getting a Powerwall at my house. In fact, three Powerwalls at my house and I'll explain that as well. Why three? So the Tesla Powerwall right now is probably the cheapest, the best sort of battery backup solution for most uh, residential situations because they are able to create batteries a lot cheaper than anyone else. And, and even here, they're still not inexpensive as we go through some of these numbers. So there's two big reasons to get a Powerwall. One is to save yourself money because you have uh, time of day pricing on your electricity and the other one is backup. So time of day pricing means like in the middle of the night you pay say five cents per kilowatt hour for your electricity, but at peak times you spend say 50 cents per kilowatt hour. So you could buy a battery, fill it up with the cheap electrons at night, and then instead of buying the expensive electricity, you'd actually use those electrons out of your power wall. And in some circumstances, you can get payback on your power wall that's three, five years. And so you might wanna do it for that reason. But you might also wanna do it for backup reasons. Let's say like me, you have a studio at your house or at your studio and uh, time is money. You might want a backup solution simply because when the internet's not working, when the computers aren't working, you're losing money. And so that's a scenario that is uh, important for a lot of us. Now, how much money you lose per unit time will determine how much of a backup uh, you need. If you own a server farm and you're Amazon or Apple, then you're going to have a huge backup because you know time is millions of dollars per hour probably. Uh, for most of the rest of us, it's not so much money, but it's enough to go, you know what, it'd be really nice to have that peace of mind that if everybody else loses their electricity, I can still use my computer, I can still use my internet, and I can still have a cold beer in a cool room if I get a couple of batteries. So that's my scenario. Now you can go even further, you might be living in a place where there is no um, electricity, there is no grid for you. You've got a cabin in the woods or something like that, but you wanna have power there. If you link the battery with solar panels, then you can be completely off grid. And it turns out that uh, if you're here in sort of a rural setting, you can do sort of both of those. You can have the battery as a backup, and if you link it with solar panels, if it's big enough, you potentially could be completely off grid if you needed to be. And that's sort of a scenario that I'm looking at. I'm grid tied, I have solar, I don't have enough solar in some of the months of the year to be completely off grid even if I had a big battery uh, backup situation. But let's say there was an earthquake, I could shut down all of the things I don't need, leave on the things I really do need, the computer, uh, the internet, uh, the beer fridge, and a little bit of air conditioning. And I could basically live in a smaller part of my house and be 100% off grid for as long as I needed it, in theory. As long as the earthquake wasn't so huge that it destroyed all my solar panels, my roof, and my battery backup, which of course could happen. But it is sort of a form of backup where the grid frequently goes down, but the smaller microgrid may not. So that's my scenario. So how big a system? Well, we're gonna go now onto the Tesla website. And it, through a range of sort of assumptions, will give you an idea of how big a power wall you need for your circumstance. So let me just go through costs before we jump on there and do that. Because I've been through that site, and for me it says three power walls is what I need. And these power walls supposedly cost around $62-ish hundred dollars, but you've also got to add in the cost of installation. And so in my case, three power walls is $20,000. So that's not an insignificant amount of money. $20,000 is like you know a, a first car, a, a cheap car. So it's not inexpensive. But for me, I've sort of done the math and like, I think this is worth it. I think this uh, peace of mind, knowing that I can run my studio, I can even run my car, you know, a couple of miles uh, per day is, uh, is the way to go because I've got a good solar array um, and the sort of special circumstance that I'm in. So uh, let's jump on the website and check out uh, through a range of possibilities, um, whether this makes sense for you. House overlooking, uh, you know, some uh, beautiful scenery here. And here is a Tesla Powerwall. And then you can sort of scroll down and start playing with some of these sliders and some assumptions to work out, you know, how many Powerwalls might fit your very specific circumstance. So let's do this. Let's say um, I have solar power and let's say I've got about a 15 kilowatt system. So I'm gonna use my actual sort of numbers so you can get an idea about this. So I've got about a 15 kilowatt array. 
I've got a pretty big house. Um, it's about 30, let's say 400 square feet. So that's a reasonably big house here in the United States, probably bigger than the average European house. But this slider goes from 500 square feet, so a small, tiny house, to gigantic houses. And there are much more gigantic houses than 6,000 square feet. But that's what this sort of thing does. And again, it, it assumes a certain amount of energy, average energy here for the US. So it says, if I've got that size and array, and I've got a house about this big, then on average, I should only need about two power walls to basically be able to run, given um, the amount of sunlight coming down during the day and shoving some into the battery overnight, I should be able to do continuous backup. But that assumes if I've got a fairly low power energy situation. Now I don't, because down here they said, do you have energy intensive appliances? Well, I live in a really hot place, so in the summer, you betcha that air conditioner is going all the time. Now I have an EV. I don't actually drive that much except when I go on big trips, but I do have an EV and I will need some of that. So I'm gonna put in there and um, will I use it during the outage? Yes. And I have a pool and a pool pump and it turns out that pool pumps use a lot of energy. Now I have a variable speed pool pump and I suggest you get a variable speed pool pump and turn it down when you don't need it pumping much because they are energy sucks. So I'm gonna put that on there as well. So you see, if you start clicking on all of these things, it says, well, now under your circumstance, still three is about the right number, but you're only gonna be able to do continuous backup for two days. So you know the first thing that's gonna happen if I really need uh, more energy? Off goes the pool pump, let the pool turn green. I don't care, I really don't care. So you can play with this for your circumstances. And again, and these are just sort of estimates. You really need to grill down specifically. You might be using a lot of computers or being using a lot of energy. So this might change for you. You may also be in a circumstance where you don't use much energy and maybe one power wall will be enough. And you can also um, just use this as a backup saying, look, I can't make my own energy, but I would like one day of continuous backup. Now the circumstance really changes. Since you're not making some energy for yourself during the day, you would need five power walls in that circumstance. So it's really nice if you're lucky enough to uh, be able to afford solar and to live in a house that has solar, then you can sort of make yourself theoretically be able to be off grid. So in terms of how much this is gonna cost, it says down here about $1,700. Now in my specific circumstance, when I went through it, it was 20,000 because I have to get a little bit of extra equipment on my house. There are some really pretty pictures if you go further down and it shows, for example, during the day, the sun hitting here and it's filling up the battery and it's going into the house. But then when the sun goes down, the battery is now doing the house. So some pretty little pictures down here. The technology behind this thing, it's not just a battery in there. There's liquid cooling, there's an inverter, there's the battery packs themselves and you can connect these to each other. There's, you can go outside, it can go inside. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty sophisticated piece of equipment. It's super quiet, almost no noise, and it has these beautiful little apps. And you'll see other people um, who've actually already got this installed playing with their apps on uh, the interwebs. And if you look at the tech specs, just so you understand, um, it has a lot of energy, so about you know, 13, 14 kilowatt hours, which is a substantial amount. And it's a very efficient machine and it can do a fair amount of peak and continuous uh, kilowatts, but it's big. It weighs 125 kilograms, so it's 275 pounds. So you can hang these on walls, but the wall has to you know, be the right type of wall. And if you want to string a three or four or five or six or seven of these together, then you actually have to mount them on the ground just as I'm doing. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, there is uh, some of the cost or range of assumptions. And now you have to work out whether it's okay for you. So um, I've been in uh, contact with Tesla and uh, they've sent me out an inspector to find out where to put these power walls. If you've got a simple installation, you can probably just do it by sending them pictures. But mine was a bit more complicated. So they sent out a, so a wonderful gentleman over there, took some pictures and said, I'm going to get to engineering. We'll get back to you. They just sent me an email. They said $20,000. And uh, then I sent them some more information. They've got to get some permits and then we'll follow this process through. They're going to put three next to each other. They're very heavy, three next to each other. And they're going to have to put it on a concrete slab and then run some conduit to my mains. Now the type of backup that I'm going to do after having a discussion is you can do it a couple of ways. You can just say, look, here's the three circuits that I want this backup on. I want the beer fridge, I want the internet, I want my computers. Forget the rest of the house. I don't care about the family. Forget them, it's about me. You can do it that way, 
or you can just sort of say here, make sure the power goes to the whole of the house. And what I'll do is I'll decide, depending on the time of year, depending on the circumstances, which things to turn off. I might run around and turn off the pool pump and I might uh, turn off all the lights and uh, turn off the extra fridge that's over in the garage and just focus the energy where I need it. That's how I think uh, it will work best on my circumstance. But you can be more specific and say, here's a couple of circuit breakers that I want you to send power to if it goes out. All right, so this is the end of part one. My name is Mel Herbert. The show is Talking Tesla. We record on Mondays. We release on Tuesdays. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Talking Tesla on iTunes and where all good past pass and where all good podcasts are podcasted. Herbert out.